Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Luke Cunningham. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, and for those of you who are returning, welcome as well. I'm glad to see you here. So today I am excited because I'm going to be showcasing and reviewing uh, one of my newer printers, or actually my newest printer. This is the second SK Go by Ernest Lin. And uh, this is a little bit different for my channel. I don't normally do reviews and I don't plan to in the future, but this is a printer that I really liked and it's something that I really wanted to get a review on not just because of the printer itself, but also because of what I plan to do with it. So stay tuned for that. But to get started, let's just jump right in. Uh, like I said, this is the second SK Go. It is a fully uh, metal printer, Core XY design. And um, I have the first batch version of this kit. Uh, I was somewhat of an early adopter for this. And um, I am very happy with my purchase. I, I do not regret it at all. I'll say that. But uh, I'll give you some of my thoughts from the perspective of a passionate hobbyist, which is what I consider myself. I'm not an engineer, uh, I'm just a student. I'm just like printers. Uh, I've built about 20 of them and I've designed some of those. Uh, so I, I know a little bit about them. I know my way around them and uh, I'm really passionate, like I said. So uh, take that into account when you're trying to think about the credibility of what I say. And know that I've also spent around seven months with this printer. I didn't jump right into a review because I wanted to get the full all the nuances of this printer, uh, get the full SK Go ex uh, experience basically. So um, yeah, let's give some of the features. Like I said, it's a Core XY, it's fully metal, all aluminum extrusion. Uh, there's also a CNC milled top plate, which bolts um, motors and pulleys and genuine highland rails onto actually. This whole kit came with genuine highland rails. It's where all of the axes ride on, including the Z axis, which is very rigid. It comes with a PEI spring steel, sheet on top of a mains heated silicone uh, heater pad. So it heats up very quickly. I'm very happy with that. It's a geared direct drive extruder on top of a Core XY Kinematics design, like I said. And uh, basically what you need to know about this is that it's a very premium printer. There's really nothing lacking in the mechanical design. <clears throat> and I might also mention that this is completely stock right here. I haven't modified it at all yet, uh, which is really saying something because all of my other printers are heavily modified just for necessity because they have to be uh, to work, especially those of my own design, which uh, really need the modification to work. But um, yes, completely stock. So that I think is a testament to its good design from the get go. I mean, very good. So the only thing that I have had to modify, I make, I created or compiled my own firmware, Marlin 2.0. Uh, and if I haven't said it already, this has a 32 bit uh, SKR 1.3 board. So you're really getting the whole package with this machine. And um, yeah, it's designed right, it's designed well. And I would say it's actually designed for the intense hobbyist. Uh, someone who's ready to dig in, who's already had their first printer, their second printer. Uh, this would make a good second or third printer in my opinion. Something, somebody who's ready to jump into a premium design and start to modify something on their own. So if that's you, I'd say that you should probably just hop right in, get this printer. Um, it's really a great bang for, for your buck printer. It's not the cheapest, but uh, it also doesn't perform cheaply, I'll say that. So now that I've talked about all of the features and the good things about this printer, I'll mention a few of the bugs, but I'll start by saying all of the small to medium bugs on this machine have already been fixed by the time I got to this review. Because uh, as I went down the line, I would write down bugs that I had you know, issues with, but I, I also kept an active eye on the Facebook community and I found that as I would write these down, they would get solved. Uh, and anytime I'd contact Ernest Lin, we'd get them solved very quickly. But independently from that, uh, all of the issues that I have encountered with this first batch machine, you will not be encountering if you buy the second revision of this printer, which is very good to hear. The one bug, however, that has not been fixed and I do not see being fixed in the future is that this was an awkward build. And I do consider myself pretty experienced in this area but it still took me eight to 10 hours to build this machine. Uh, inherently, it is just a complex machine that will take you a long time to build. There's a lot of things you have to get right during this build. You're having to keep uh, gantries and, act and um, brackets and things square the entire time you're building them. And you're kind of trying to balance multiple things at once. I think it could have been done better in my opinion, and I've seen machines that do it better, but that's really the only con to this machine. Uh, as long as you're not building 30 of these or something like that for a print farm, this is gonna be your go-to machine, I think. It's just gonna take you a while to get right, but once you get it right, it stays right. 
I haven't had any issues with it afterwards. It's completely stuck, like I said, been very reliable, and it's my go-to machine. It's my workhorse right now, and I think it would make a good workhorse printer for someone who needs one. So I believe that's all that I have to say about the features of this machine and the cons. Everything you need to know, oh, everything you need to know about the second SK Go. The exciting part, which you might have stayed that whole time for, is that I plan to make eventually. I plan to make a tool changer out of this machine. Well, it first caught my eye because it actually looks like the E3D tool changer, and I thought I have to make that into a tool changer because that's the natural thing to do, right? But it is fully. I mean, I, I really couldn't have picked a better design to to work off for this. It has the open frame concept that you'd want, and there's actually ample room in the back here for four to five maybe tools. So. It's, uh, it's, it's perfect, it's very ex expandable. Uh, in the documentation, Ernest actually calls us a highly hackable machine, and I would completely agree with that. It is made for hacking, it's made for expanding on. Uh, it's not, okay, it's the type of machine that you can keep stock for a long time, but it's the type of machine also that you really think it has capability to move on to not being stock. And this is, uh, that's my full thoughts. I think that I'm going to turn this into a really, really interesting and capable tool changer because it's, a, it's, a, it's an area that I'm interested in 3D printing. And uh, I'm gonna be following, most likely, the Jubilee Tool Changer design uh, by Josh Vasquez, which is an amazing design in and of itself. But I think I can modify some of those files to fit on the SK Go. There's actually a talk within the community and by Ernest himself of turning this into maybe a tool change upgrade kit. But I think I'd like to jump the gun and maybe do start this on my own. Uh, so um, let me know what you think about that. Stay tuned for some of the updates that I'm going to be giving on the SK Go and some of my other projects, including X Theta, which is a completely new kinematics design, and a secret project, which I can't say anything about right now, but we'll be making. I'm very excited about that as well. So there's a few of the projects I'm kind of balancing, but uh, this is going to get done eventually. The tool changer will be a reality, and I think that it will be very exciting, a very fun build, very fun journey, and I hope to tag along for the, for the ride. So thanks for watching. Uh, tune in next time. This has been Luke Cunningham. Peace out.